We have been talking about it for days, everyone. The violent swings in the credit markets, more so even than stocks. Dave Austin knows the credit markets, any product in any market, from investment-grade corporates to high yield. From U.S. to emerging markets, he's your guy. Dave heads up credit sales for the Americas at Nomura and says volumes and credit default swaps at his firm are up two and a half times in the past six weeks. David, good to see you. Good to see you too, Eric. Let's talk about what's happening in the credit markets. It does seem kind of crazy. Spreads blowing out uh, in the credit default swap market. Is this, and, and this is a question I think you may be able to answer for us because nobody has been able to answer it up until now. Is this speculative activity or is this hedging activity? Are these banks hedging against exposures effectively that they already have risks that they've already taken or hedge funds piling in and saying, we can drive these stocks and these CDS down. Well, well, setting the stage first, taking a step back, you know, it's all eyes on Europe, right? So investors, in, particularly in the U.S., anyone, investors have a difficult time getting their arms around any bank in Europe with, a, with an accent or an umlaut in its name, right? So that's the first point. The second point is real money and hedge funds have been building cash positions for about the last month or so. The third point, corporate dealer desks in the U.S., are holding as much, uh, as little inventory as they have over the last two and a half years. And the last thing is, your repo traders are now the most popular guys on the trading floor. We've seen this movie before, you know, and as a, as a very loyal ex Bear Stearns employee, I cried the first time I watched it. Now going through it at Nomura, um, you, the, the path of least resistance is wider, right? Anybody with, who, who's perceived to be a barometer of counterparty exposure, it's the market's just pushing it wider. So yes, it is. It is some speculative activity, but there are good reasons to hedge this risk. Good reasons to hedge the risk, sure. But as you say, we've seen this movie before. The question everybody wants you to answer is: Is it going to end the same way? Is that what your clients are telling you? Is that what they're betting on effectively? The, there are the clients right now who are buying protection. They're counterparty hedging act. There's counterparty hedging activity. There is, um, there's bank loan hedging activity. There are correlation desks hedging their gamma as it moves who out. Who's selling it to them? Is this, this just a, who, is there anyone standing up in the wings saying, I'm Warren Buffett, I'm going long. Who is it? The last two and a half weeks, if I look at our trading bonders over the last two and a half weeks, the sellers of protection in just about any name financial related, Bank of America, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, over 75% of the time, it's been the, the, the more active trading accounts, the hedge funds, et cetera, who are trading the ranges, right? And we those haven't guys aren't seen, helping the market. They're just pushing it. The, well, they're, they're setting positions, and some of them have been ahead of it. Some of them have bought protection early on. Some dealers have bought protection early on and are luck, likely to take some profits if things have moved wider. But there is no natural supplier, which is why you see these gappy moves, which is why you see 150 basis point moves in a day. Uh, David, you were talking about the counterparty risk trade, and I think it's important for you to explain how this works. I don't want to get too far into the mechanics, but sure. if people understand how it works, they may, I suspect, grow a little less concerned about how it's playing out in the stock market even. Well, dealers who have very good uh, derivative debts, right, be it commodities, be it equities, be it rates, be it credit, they build up exposures to those with whom they are trading. As spreads widen and there is a chance or a perceived uh, chance that that counterparty who sold you protection on a particular credit may not be around for you to cash in on that insurance policy, which is effectively what a CDS contract is, you need to go and hedge that elsewhere. Or you need to go you hedge buy it or more you need protection to go, on another yeah, name. Or you, you need to go and hedge your risk to that counterparty, right? So you'll buy protection. That is one of the reasons, you, you had mentioned earlier on the show, our volumes at Nomura have gone up two and a half times. That's one of the reasons we're, we're a recipient or a beneficiary of this move was as counterparty risk goes up, our customers look for other places to... Our, to our clients that didn't traditionally trade with you now setting up ISDAs? Yes. Over the last two, the last two weeks have been the busiest, since Nomura began to build out in fixed income two years ago. The last two weeks have been the busiest our onboarding team has been, right? Isn't there a vicious cycle aspect to it, though? Because if, if, what you, if I understand correctly what you describe, people, so not only do you take out insurance on certain names, then you end up having to take out insurance on the name that sold you the insurance in the first place. So that, that 
I mean, that buying activity, right, you're buying the insurance, pushes the spreads out even wider, the rest of the market takes notice and drives the spreads on the other names That's wider. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, so what you stops have this, it? I mean, uh, 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 it, what's the only thing that can stop it? A short covering saying, rally? The path of least resistance is wider, and you have these gappy moves. And yesterday, this, most of the selling of protection was guys covering shorts. Now, when you talked about exposure to counterparties, mm -hmm. in 08, before the real crash happened, we started to see clients start to assign trades away. When they faced Lehman, they started to call up JP Morgan and Bank America and say, hey, can you take this trade? Are you seeing that happen yet? No, it's not to the degree that it was in 08. I remember when I was when I was at Bear Stearns, I had to call around, hey, are you are you still accepting our trades? I'm hearing you're not. You called different heads of desk. I was accepting your yes, trades. Yes, I know you were. <laughs> um, but no, we're not no, no we're not nations. seeing that right now. I How mean, about prime brokerage balances? Prime brokerage balances, while I wouldn't I wouldn't submit to you that we're seeing a uh, you know a flow out of some of the the highlighted names before but our prime brokerage activity and the interest in, in, in giving us prime brokerage balances has also gone up uh, incrementally. So you're saying clients are call hey, Nomura, can I set up an account? Not, exactly. not I'm going to take my prime brokerage balances from Morgan Stanley and move it, but they want to open an additional? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. David, you were saying earlier that the repo guys are the kings of the trading floor right now. What does that mean? We know what it meant back in 2008. They were able to demand haircuts effectively right. on the collateral they were taking from right. counterparties. Is that happening, or are they wielding their power and influence in other ways? No, they're, they're just a center point for information. Where are, where are some of the European banks able to fund themselves? But they're not so, punishing other banks yet. It's not come to not that. Not necessarily. However, there are some buy-side accounts who have their own financing desks who are now checking with their, their corporate bond portfolio managers, hey, can I, can I charge points up front as I do this repo over the next week or two weeks or month? The so, clients you cover, are yeah. any of them making money right now? It's been a difficult environment. I mean, hedge funds, uh, hedge funds for the most part have had um, a difficult time, even in this heightened volatility. Um, real money accounts, um, no, one's, no one's particularly happy right now. No one's happy. Well, that's we're happy to have you on. Well, thanks Indeed, for, we thanks are. For David, thank you for coming. Pleasure David Austin, here. he is head of credit sales for the Americas at Namura here in New York City.